Is this thing on? Is it on? It is? It is? We're recording? Hello all you beautiful cosplayers out there in the interwebs. Uh, my name is Buddy Cosplay and I'm your host here at the CC Cosplay YouTube channel. Too much information, just thought I'd throw it out there. But anyway, today in this quick tip video, we're going to talk about clean cuts. And by that I mean when you're cutting your phone with your razor, how to best get a good, straight, clean cut. It's going to be a quick tip, so this is going to be a short video, but I think it's a valuable lesson that many of us neglect and forget over time. And uh, if you really take the time to, to do the things we're going to talk about in this video, your armor and props will have better lines and will look that much better in the end. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. Good clean cuts. They are important to your cosplay because you want good sharp angles. And the major number one secret to having good clean cuts is having a good sharp razor. Tip number two for that is using a straight edge. These two things combined will give you great straight edges that are cut great and they look great at the end when everything's all put together. So this quick tip video, we're just going to discuss those things really quick. There are many kind of rulers on the market. You can use the edge of a paint stick, but the problem with that is the razor will cut into the wood. So you really want a metal ruler. Same thing will happen with the plastic ruler. It will eventually cut into it. So a nice metal straight edge would be perfect. I like this kind here. It's got the quirky bottom. Kind of helps it stay a little better than this side. And it's metal. I have a magnet up above me. Just boop and sticks up there, out of the way. Another kind of straight edge that I like to use is a square. This is really great because if you have a flat edge already, put that right up against a flat edge, you can always get a good 45 or you can get a 90 degree angle. And you slide it, move it, slide it, move it, slide it, move it. And that's really good when you have many things that need to be uh, parallel to each other. So these come in really handy. You can also cut along these, but there are these grooves cut in most of them. And if you just listen, it's not as straight. I mean, you, there's a straighter edge, but you sometimes hit those. And that'll dull your knives out a lot faster. And um, the next part is sharp knives. I've taken this knife, and I run it against my table a few times. I've dulled it up to give you an example of what a dull knife would do. I'm just going to use this edge to brace myself. I'm going to try to cut through this foam. Okay, this is what a dull knife did. It didn't do much of anything. Now you might have to go through a second time, or a third time. Put it down to the table. If you catch yourself doing that, you do not have a sharp knife. Stop what you're doing because your edge will be a little more gritty. It won't look quite as finished. And you'll also notice there's little tiny lines in here. That's from the repetitive moving. So to do away with the, the doll knives, if you have spares, put them over the side. Don't use them for now. Finish with another blade. If you run out of blades, stop. Replace the blade which is very easy to do if you have this kind, which you can pick up on Amazon or on a Harbor Freight. Just pop that right off. This whole thing comes apart. Just has an eye and a hole that this goes in to help hold it in place. You slide the new one back in. Put the end back on. And you've got a brand new blade in there. Very simple. Now, you can sharpen this knife, like I said, or just move on to another knife that you have. I keep, I keep a pretty good amount. When you can get them three for a dollar at Harbor Freight when they're on sale, or you get a big package of them on Amazon for you know six or seven bucks and you get 15 of them, why not have a bunch handy? It'll save you a lot of time with uh, sharpening. So I'm gonna show you the difference between that knife and a sharp knife. Use this edge. 
quick cut, just like that. Now, I let up on pressure here, so it didn't quite cut all the way through. That was actually my fault. That wasn't the razor. So if I was to take my time, go nice and slow and perpendicular, I get a good, clean cut. Now that cut is perfection. It is smooth. There's no issues with that. And that's the kind of cut you always want. So how quickly can you make a knife sharp? Well, pretty quick. I did a sharpening video already, but here are some things you can use to sharpen a knife. And my order of favorites, my Kershaw sharpener, you can pick it up on Amazon. I'll link down to it below. A whetstone, which you just add a little water, or some lubricant of some sort, such as WD-40, you rub your knife on it. This is some 1200 grit sandpaper. You put it on an edge that you can kind of use like this. Just rub it across a few times in about a 20 degree angle, which is what you'll do with all of these. And that's how you can sharpen. But now we know how to sharpen. And when your knife is just starting to get dull after a few cuts, that's all it takes. It really only takes five seconds to stop and go like this. And then you can move on to cutting again. Now, of course, I intentionally dulled this one. So we're going to see how long it takes to sharpen it great. I'm going to add a little WD-40 on it. A little tiny bit, just as a lubricant. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now I've done, I put this flat, lift it up just a little bit. Give me about a 20 degree angle. And then I go across it. Now let's see if those five strokes were enough. Five strokes is all it took with the Kershaw. It might take a couple more strokes with the other ones, but if you're looking for um, something that's a little easier and a little more handy, I definitely recommend this Kershaw sharpener. And just like that, you have sharp knives again. Now to continue on with our discussion about getting straight edges, we know the importance of sharp knives, which by the way you can use these for your craft knives as well. Your exact end blades. It's a little more difficult, but you could do it. And we're going back to our discussion on this. And basically, when you have a sharp knife and a good straight edge, you should be able to get consistent, straight, good cuts. So, uh, always remember to plan out your cuts. Whatever your cuts are going to be. That way you always have a reference and you're not just guessing. Make sure you have your ruler up against the edge and you want pressure across the whole thing because if you're holding up here, by the time you get down here, you're going to eventually push this away and it's going to be away from the line a little bit. So you want to make sure that you have pressure across the entire ruler and that your fingers are beyond the edge of the metal. I've a few times had my finger right on the edge and gotten to it and stopped and been like, whoa, if I would have went faster, I'd been missing the tip of my finger. So be aware of your fingers at all times. So now we have a good sharp knife, we've got a good straight edge, and we've got our thing traced out and everything's down with good pressure. Just going to do a quick cut. You want to stay perpendicular if you're looking for a good straight 90 degree cut. Of course you can do different angles, but we just want to go straight. Straight, consistent pressure, and consistent pulling. You don't have to go zooming through. And then you have a nice, clean cut piece. So next we're going to do the same thing with a beveled cut. We've got our line traced. We've got our metal ruler down, holding it with pressure across the whole thing. Got my fingers pulled back where they're safe. Got a good sharp knife. And I'm going to hold it up to the foam. And I'm just going to slightly put an angle on it. And then I'm going to pull. I'm trying to hold that angle. Consistent pressure all the way through the cut. And that did no. That little bit of time is all it took to sharp to dull that enough that it cut all the way through. Just didn't cut that last little membrane. That's all it took. Now you can cut through again. Some people prefer to do that, but now you've got this little this little fuzzy edge, which I don't like. So we're just going to recut that. Without a line, we don't have a line laid down. And we're going to get rid of this knife, 
try this new, new knife. And again, about 45. Just nice, even pressure all the way through the cut. Now with that new sharper knife, we've got a nice bevel all the way through. It's nice and clean. We've got that angled look all the way through it on both pieces. So that's how you make good clean cuts. And that's it. That's how you make good clean cuts. Just remember to always have a sharpener, a knife, and a ruler. Stay creative, people. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Before you go, you should think about stopping over and seeing me at cccosplay.com. There you can find articles and tips to help you take your cosplay to the next level. Also, if you sign up for the membership email list, I'll send you a few surprises and let you know about special things before anyone else has a chance to hear about them. It'll be our little secret. And remember, stay crafty.